It was the most critical shot for Fred Couples in this championship. Fred Couples at 16, his second shot. A moment yeah. where seeming disaster finds a way to serendipity. Oh, what a bounce. He got the bounce of it. That's like the bounce he got at number 12 at Augusta when he won. <laughs> the 16th hole at TPC Sawgrass has often been a focal point between victory and defeat. Today would be no different. That's what great players do. Can Fred take full advantage of his good fortune? For sixth hole, Fred couples for birdie to move within one of the lead. The champion in 1984, Fred Couples, moves into a tie for second place. To seven. Fred Couples, 167. To the par four, seventh. Ready, birdie three, five, and six. Stands one back of the co-leaders, Grady and Tolls. Let's go to the seventh. All right, pick this. Fred Couples now for a share of the lead. For his third straight birdie. And just left it out a little bit. Couples in second place, two strokes behind Tommy Tolles, just with a four iron. Hole playing 216 yards today. And look at this shot. Oh. Fred Couples knocks wow. it stiff. Great. Fred Couples, where he has this putt of some little inside of two feet, just inside the right edge of the hole. Fred Couples goes to 14 under and just one stroke behind Tommy Tolles. Fred off birdies at three, five, six, and eight. Pull on the course, the par five, ninth, 582 yards, second shot for Couples. 295 yards out, so he's trying to lay it out to whatever his magical number is, which is probably about, well, if I was guessing 90, 95 yards. So he needed to hit that about 200 yards. I'm not so sure he's that close, but we'll see. Boomerang. Now at the ninth, the third shot for Fred Couples into this par five. 107 yards out. Just, um, well, I'm not sure how far he hits a lob wedge, but, um, or sand wedge. This is probably a big sand wedge. Aiming way left, as you can see. And he lands a short right. And, uh, just land it on and run it right in the hole. It's running right to what green there is. The Fred Clouck and the crew, these greens are so pure. It's almost, uh, I just couldn't believe it this morning looking at the greens, but uh, this is definitely makeable. pitch and run and it looked like it was in 170 yards perfect hole location for him he's got a bit of a hook lie and a fade shot that's some real commentary between him and his caddy caddy says don't beat too far he said no 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 couples for birdie he's two off the lead very similar putt to the one he made at 18 yesterday a little right to lefter Time to do it right here, Freddie. I think he thought he made it, and uh, he just had maybe a titch too much speed is all. Two behind holes. One of the best rhythms on the tour. Would you agree with that, Johnny? Yeah, it's just... Uh, when I do clinics, um, I ask people who they think have the best swings, and I've done hundreds of these things, and people 
think this is the best swing in golf, and you analyze it, there's some things that aren't according to Hoyle, but uh, when you look at the rhythm and the effort and the effortless uh, action, it's unbelievable. And speed and power. And that one, he put he put the hammer down, I'm telling you, but uh, he's paying the price, got ahead of it. What happens when you pick up a lot of speed coming down, you have a good opportunity to miss it right. Let's take a look at this. He t put the turbo boost on it right here. Took it back, nice casual backswing. See how steady, look at his leg action right here, how steady this is. Head is swiveling to the right a little, beautiful right there. Look at the wind up. Now he comes into it and the hip comes up, left hip is coming up, up a little and you can see where his left elbow and the hands are open at impact and uh, goes right. Back to Fred Couples, Dan. Well, he's just going to take a little 8-iron or 7-iron and punch it down the fair. we got a good lie in the pine needles. A good break. He's taking it up the left side and low. Good play. Fred Couples' third shot at the par 5. He's looking right at 134 yards, and the hard part about this is getting yourself to fly that ball all the way back to the flag, Johnny Miller. There's a little ridge in front of it, and if you put it anywhere short and left, it spins right down the hill. And the reason why... Uh, talked about uh, keeping it short of the hole over the green is pretty darn dead. It's just a good solid pitching wedge for Freddy. He's got it going right at it. It's the right stick. It's a good play here. That says pretty good play. Fred Couples makes this putt. He will go to 15 under. different stroke, Freddie. It's embarrassing. And at that time, it was too good of a round. You know, I mean, a three-footer or a four-footer, but this was like straight in from two feet. And I'm not saying I've never missed any, but at that time, it's one you don't really want to walk away with. As you can see, hits up on it, leaves the toe open, but the, if you come down before you... In the 12th tee, Fred Couples won off the lead. Hitting a driver, this hole is only 336 yards. The fairway gets very narrow the further you hit it. I think he had a little anger in that shot, Johnny Miller. Wow. Probably the most critical shot for Fred Couples in this championship. Second at the par 4, 12, 67 yards to the hole. He needs to put this in tight. Couples, eight feet, dead flat putt, slightly uphill. He moved a little bit on his last one. Let's see if he can stand still. Stroked us firmly right in the back, just to tie for the lead. All right. And have we got us a horse race. Fred Couples on the tee at the par 3 13th. You see the leaderboard story. He is caught Montgomery and Tolls at 15 under. Par 3, 175 yards today, and it was on Friday when Fred found the water hazard, which runs all along the left side of this hole, all the way up to the green. He made a double bogey there. Pin plays, but today, Dan, a little deeper into the green, so uh, it's, it's not the front part of the green doesn't uh, become as a, a bad a hazard. So you look to him to hang this out to the right. The pin sets up perfect for him, a little right to left. Just a nice, solid seven iron for him. Thin. Well, he hung it out right. Yeah, he came up out of that. It'll roll a little bit down to, there's a three-tiered green here. That's the second lowest portion that it's rolling into now, and the pin's set in the lowest portion. So Freddie will have to come over that ridge. Head to 17. 
And back at 13, Fred Couples having to come over this ridge. Johnny, give us an idea of what uh, challenge he has. Well, you can see there's a ridge line that runs right here, and he's actually coming up just slightly to this point. And then, of course, now it drops probably a foot and a half in, in, into here. So he almost wants to stop it about right there. If he can make the ball almost pause right in that area, he's got a chance to get it close. Of course, he can make it going quicker, but he, that takes a chance of three-putting. So uh, I think... It'll be uh, one of those putts where you just want to get it close with option to get lucky. Johnny, the good thing about this is you kind of pin high over there. If he's a little bit shorter, the putt really breaks hard left when it comes off the ridge. It's almost a straight putt coming down that hill. So basically, if he gets the right speed, look for this to be in tap in range. And you can see uh, the best way to look at this uh, putt is you can see the ball is about level with his caddy's hips. So once he gets to the halfway point, it's going to fall about the length of his leg. And pick up speed. Zeller now to Couples and his par saving attempt. Tricky little putt coming down this hill. If he hits a little firm, it may stay up on the high side. If he gives a little less uh, effort, it could break off to the right. So he needs to just hit this solidly left center. Tempo friend. In the center, Fred Couples pars the par 3 13th. A tie for the lead at 15 under par. The 14th tee. Par four, 438 yards. Ideal tee shot, right center of the fairway. And Fred Couples has busted this tee shot down the slope. Perfect position to go after a back left pin placement today. In Fred Couples getting ready for his second. 11 of 13 greens in regulation today, Dan Pohl. Well, Freddie just busted a drive down here. He's only got 170 to the flag. And earlier in the day, guys were hitting, you know, five and six irons in here. And uh, right now, Freddie's looking at just a hard eight iron. One thing, you can't miss it as long. It's really kind of a, a sucker pin placement over there. You want to go at, this green, at the flag, but uh, if you go at it and miss it long or short, you're looking at five. So look for this to start out right. Just Put it in play. Give himself about a 20 footer. Well, he left it way right. It's in the center of the green. And in the swale here at 14, Fred Couples. At about 45 feet going up the hill. Pretty slow until it reaches the ridge. Once it covers over the ridge, it should pick up a little bit of pace, break a little bit to his right. to pick up the speed on this putt. Oh, Fred really hit it. You have to to get it up that ridge. Well, under normal conditions, you'd say this is good, but these aren't normal conditions, Dan Hicks, and uh, these can get away from you real quick, real fast. The, the pace goes down this hill, so he's just going to give this a little bit of a tap and just get it online. In the center... Fred Couples remains tied for the lead at 15 under. One of the leaders, Fred Couples, teeing off at 15. Hasn't won in the United States since the 94 Buick Open 19 long months ago, and his uh, fans are rooting heartily for him today. And Fred Couples. This from 156. Pins way back, 30 back. He's got to carry it back on that ridge. He's just going to put a little nice move on an eight iron here, bring it in high. Should set up real good for his shot here. If anything, you want to miss this a little left. Really swinging at these short irons well. Come on, 
Evans taking it in high, got it left to the flag a little bit. Makeable putt. It goes the other way, if anything. Fred Couples at the par 5 16th. You want to aim right at that crane and just hit a little draw if you can. Not the best shot for Fred. Well, Dave Mari just killed that one. It's going up the left side, and this is big. Well, as you pointed out, uh, it, it can carry that ball a long way, and that did hit into that upslope a little bit there, Dan. But big drive. And let's go back to what's the total? Yeah, that Red Couples at 16, his second shot. Dan Poles with this group. Daniel? Well, we're talking it over down here. He's got 201 to the front left, Dave, but 212 to the front right, and then 223 back to the hole. So I think he's got to go with a two iron to, to make sure that he carries it. If he does to hang it out a little bit to the right, it carries that front uh, grass bunker up there. But, uh, you know, this is the problem with this. He's got an uphill lie in the wind. There isn't a lot, but what it is here is a little bit into him. So if it does do anything, it could upshoot a little bit on him. He has selected a two iron. Oh, and he's got it going high and left to right. This is the, might have blocked it though. Oh, what a bounce. He got the bounce of it. That's like the bounce he got at number 12 at Augusta, at Augusta what he won. <laughs> well, it didn't hang up on the bank like number 12 did, but it did bounce forward, which a lot of them have done from that area today. Then it bounced left, too? Just a little bit, John. If he carried it a little farther, it might have gotten wet, but it landed just on the down slope. Look at him, wondering, hoping. Rob <laughs> missed it. He's going, oh, really? In the crowd. They like that? Just, just dawning on him. Uh-oh, a little grin there. So I'm standing there with his two iron and basically trying to hit it close. It was a perfect club. Uh, I cut the ball, and I actually overcut it, and it was hanging, and uh, I thought it was in the water for sure. And uh, it hung on the edge and kicked down onto the fringe. It was a huge break. Not a bad shot, just just turned out lucky. Take a look at this shot. Uh, he's given up on it right now. He thinks it's definitely in the water. And you can see it hits the side of that hill there, which you couldn't tell from the other camera angle uh, that it was sloping so much to the left. You'd think it would hop straight and hang on the board or go in, and it, it just ricocheted straight left, which uh, pretty nice break, actually. Well, John, if it hadn't have been sloped to the left, you're right. Couples for Eagle. It's going to break left. Oh! Oh, man! Fred Couples, Eagle, goes to 17 under and a one-shot lead. Woo! What a time to get a good break and what a time to hold a putt. If anything, it kind of went left and then went to the right. But there's a big ridge to the left, uh, everything else. I was on the right front. It was just as flat as could be. When I was going up 16, I was a shot behind, and I knew I needed to birdie 16. Uh, and when I made that, I, I really got a rush. Well, if you look in the Webster's next year, it'll have under serendipity, it'll show Fred Couples, 16th hole. Exactly. 
satisfied. And now to Fred Couples at 17. And Dick, the experience of Fred Couples, he waited for Montgomery to hit that shot. He was not going to address this putt until that ball was in the air. And what a difference three feet made on that hole for those two men. When he watched the ball splash right in front of the right of Hine. It's about 22 footer coming down the hill. This will be going very slow as it approaches the hole. Two for Fred Couples, and the cheers reverberate throughout the TPC at Sawgrass. I didn't like the way it looked coming back into the grain, and I have a tendency to hit up on putts, and when you're into the grain, they'll bounce a little bit. So I felt like I could trickle it down there, maybe a couple feet short at worst, but I was not going to have it go four or five feet by, and it went in just trickling, so it was perfect. Fred Couples yesterday on 18 hit the most beautiful soft draw I have ever seen him hit and he probably right now should be thinking that exact same thing that he uh, saw yesterday when he hit it. Johnny Miller is going with a three went off the tee and this is a real good play for him because uh, even though the fairways are soft you can hit that driver through the fairway real easy. Couples in 92, of course, record 63, and then Greg Norman tied that in uh, 94. And it's so hard for the gallery to restrain themselves. They're, they're so excited. I mean, and so Fred wants them to be as calm as he is. Well, he's got it heading up the right side. He's got to turn over. He's going to catch the right rough. Well, not where he wants it because uh, that leaves some possibilities. Colin makes his putt there and birdie 17. Who knows what might happen? Six or seven if he tries to go out and around. It appears that he's taken some sort of a, a four iron or something. He may try to hit something a real hard cut and keep it low and try to run it up the gap. Not much loft on this club, so I'm guessing this is either a three or four iron. If I was a caddy, I think I would have taken and handed him three clubs and run away with the rest of them. It would have been sand wedge, pitching wedge, and a nine iron. <laughs> He's swinging like he's going to take a full rip at it and just try to really cut this ball hard. Yeah! Oh, what a great shot. <laughs> going towards the right front of the green. Could catch those mounds over there. That is one heck of a golf shot there. You don't know how good that is. At that time, it might have seemed harder, but when you're standing there and you know you don't want to go left because you drop it way back and all that, and I thought chipping the ball down the fairway was not quite the smartest shot. I just felt like it was a pretty easy shot. Just want to get it up there inside about 10 feet and take his chances from there. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. A dream finish. That putt for a 3 2 4 and a 64 final round. Mm. Freddie. Straight as you get. For the best ever final round in the 22 year history of this event. Maybe the most exciting, also. It's 
So birdies here on three to go 11 under. Yeah, I hit a seven iron in the back tier and uh, not a tough putt. And, and again, it's you, to catch him, you got to make some birdies somewhere. Now it's six. And I had gotten very lucky here. I drove it in the right rough and caught a tree actually coming out of there. And uh, again, not a fool, but uh, nice to see. And at eight, and your tee shot with a four iron, one of the best uh, shots I hit all week. It went right at the flag, and uh, I think I'm swinging better. Uh, you know, Paul, my teacher, came down on Thursday and watched, and you know, I hit a lot of shots like that this week. Very few went two feet from the hole. That took you to 14 under, then to 12. Uh, this I had a big drive. I've been hitting driver all week and had a, about a 65-yard shot. I saw Scott Gumps take the spin coming back. And, you know, after missing a short putt, but this is a little uphill. I didn't have very far. I had about 220. This and, is the biggest shot of the day. Well, <laughs> not, you know, it's a sucker pin, and I'm hitting a big cut in there, and this is unbelievable. But Do you, do you think it was wet? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to kid anybody. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing with Joe. And, again, not a difficult putt. Not used to making these, and when I make them, I seem to make them all. But obviously, I needed to regroup, and I get pretty emotional out there. In 17 and 18, you can make anything, but again, a downhill putt, and I barely hit this, and it's just going and going, and right then I know it's in. Oh, you had this place rocking. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. We got a little bit more to show you here. And oh, we loved it. We loved it. This is a shot here. We talked again, about this it. This is going at the scoreboard. And all I'm trying to do is just make sure I cut it. And, and again, I'm taking too much club. And if it overcuts, it's going to go into the gallery. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's a <laughs> shot I don't feel uncomfortable with. Ten years ago, I might not have hit it as good. But and here's a putt, you know, I, yeah, up through the swale, the first five or six feet. And. You know, I'm better at this distance sometime than four feet, but uh, I was glad it would hold up that close. That was just a magical finish. I mean, you just, that's one of those things you just, you got to just smile so much you might hurt your lips. Well, you know, I was biting my lip walking up <laughs> half the holes. I was kind of laughing and, and chewing on it. But again, uh, you know, I haven't won in a long time on our tour. I've won a couple other places. So it, I can't, I just feel great about the way I played. And uh, right it all off to experience. I felt great out there. It was one of the weirdest rounds ever. I don't know if it's the weather or, or what, but it just seemed easy. Uh, and I'm, I thoroughly enjoy winning here. Again, this is a, a dream. I haven't been playing too bad uh, this year, but I didn't expect to win. And uh, anytime you can shoot 64, I, I think my game's back. And this is great.